Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm Byron and we are still in the Gathering Dust Bar and I decided to stow some items in this barrel here. Um, those are quest items from the mor mortuary and that skull. I'm not really sure whether we need them. Probably not. I surely hope the game doesn't take them away. So let's return to Angar's house and rest. Because we are a little hurt after our battle in the mausoleum. You must obtain permission to rest here. That shouldn't be too difficult. Thanks. Feeling better. Oh, now it's night. Um, so we should go down, I think, um, to the southeastern portion of the hive. World map. Okay. Interesting. Rakepicker Square somewhere here apparently. Oh well, okay. Who are you? Hive Tout. This attractive, scantily clad woman calls out to you as she makes her approach. Pardon me, good sir. Pardon, you seem a bit lost, if I may be so bold. Would you require the service of a tout perchance? Only a single copper, sir. What's a tout? A guide, sir, to see you around this part of the hive. Alright, here's a copper piece. Thank you, sir. This jinx well spent. She pockets the copper coin. There's two gates leading from here. Both are on the westernmost side of the area, one in the north and one in the south. Two places you may wish to visit are the smoldering corpse bar and the tattoo parlor. Less, lastly, there is a set of buildings of the times called the Tenements of Th Thax, a dangerous, dangerous place, sir. Where is the smoldering corpse bar? It is in the very middle of the area, sir. A square building with a doomed, domed roof. Walk along the southernmost east-west road, you'll see its entrance facing to the south. Where is the tattoo parlor? The parlors at the eastern end of this area, sir, a dome building with wondrous iron mesh atop it. Its entrance, entrance faces southwest. Where's the northwest gate lead? To the part of the hive where the mortuary lies, sir. The gathering dust bar, the dustman memorial, and the mausoleum are there as well. Where's the southwest gate lead? The gate leads to the part of the hive which holds the office of vermin and disease control as well as a decent sized market. Where's this tenement of Thax? She nods, this is a cluster of buildings along the northern side of this area, sir. You'll want to avoid this place, unless of course you're spoiling for a fight, sir. This is all I wish to know. Farewell. Okay, let's go down here. Um, apparently this is the... bar? Alright. I'm gone. Harlot. Pick. Drunk. Harlot. This man sways unsteadily back and forth, catches his balance for a moment and manages a sickly twisted smile at something just past your right ear. Greetings. He not slowly then manages a flagon filled gurgle and a small green colored trail of rule begins to drip from the side of his mouth running down into his scruffy, dirt-caked beard. He looks like he's barely able to stand up, much less carry on a conversation. Good. Done. Okay... But the vines of these buildings have withered from the heat emanating from the walls. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! Fuck it. Damn it. 
What was that all about? All right. All right. We kill you. And we kill you too. Stupid thugs. Who are you anyway? Jelly. You see a thin man with stained clothes, a hooked nose and two stubby horns jutting from his forehead. He is stumbling about and muttering to himself his things of grind, vomit and cheap wine. Greetings. Eh? The man squints barely at you. Who is it? What? Never mind, sorry to bother you. I'm gone. Get the money. All right. I fuck. You want some too? Hey. All righty. You want some too? Uh, farewell, and he attacks, of course. I'm gone. At least we Done. get some money out of that. Is that the entrance to the corpse bar? Yes, it is. Nice. Let's go in here then. <clears throat> we have Drusilla, let's take Done. a look around here. Done. We have Ignos. We have Mochai. Uh, patrons. Done. Some sort of fiends. We have a Mercy Killer patron. Done. In quicks. Ah, Decon, my friend. I was looking for you. Why can't I save? Excuse me, I can't save. I did get an auto save when I came in here, right? Uh, well. The man before you is old. He is dry. His dry yellow skin has the scars of one who has traveled everywhere and never rested long in any one place. His pinched face is inhumanly angular and his ears sweep out from his skull, tapering to points. He wears a loose-fitting orange tunic and a strange shimmering blade is strapped across his back. The blade looks to be a too prolonged lathe made of some metal whose surface swirls like a film of oil on a pond. Critics. The man turns to you, his eyes like polished coal. He stares through you, and for a moment you wonder if he might be blind. The weapon suddenly turns a dead, flat black, mirroring the man's eyes. Are you alright? Hail, traveler. He says nothing for a moment, merely searches your face with his eyes. Hail, traveler. His voice is quiet and somber, like a wind whispering through the branches of a great tree. Hail. Your eyes are the weight of one who has traveled far to be in this place. The man meets your gaze, his eyes burrowing into yours. His weapon drains of its black color, resuming its shimmering you noticed before you spoke to him. Yeah, you could say that. The man's gaze does not waver from yours. I am known as Dakon. The emphasis he places on the word known strikes you as odd, yet familiar at the same time. You are not known to me. I am not known. I do not know myself. That is for the best. In knowing yourself, there would be little in the planes left worth knowing. He falls silent for a moment, still studying you with his cold black eyes. I would know why you have come to the city. I am looking for answers. I have many questions. Speak your questions. I will hear you. Your features are unfamiliar to me. What are you? Agisarai. Agisarai? Kisarai is one of the people. 
one of the people. Do you always repeat what other people say? Yes, but what are the Gisera exactly? The Khan is silent for a moment and he speaks. Our history does not need to be made known to you. We would bleed to death on time's blade before I recited a faction of the histories of our people. I don't need, don't need to know your histories, but I would know of your people as they are now. The Khan is silent for a moment. Know this and accept it as an answer. We are the people who make our home upon the shifting plane of limbo. With a deft motion, Dekon slips the blade from his hand and holds it before him. Wait, see what happens. There, we mold the matter of limbo with our minds. We forge cities with our thoughts. As you watch, a series of rippling waves of metal begin to roll forth from the center of the blade. The pitch and crest of the waves match the in inflections in Dekon's voice. In its chaos, we dwell with only our knowing to preserve us. We are the Gisserai. What is that blade you have? It moved, shifted in response to your voice. It is a Karach blade. It sounds clinging to me. It's an object that lets others know the rank of the wielder. Karach? What does that mean? Dakon fought silent for a moment as if searching for the correct words. In your tongue, the closest translation is chaos matter. The people may shape it with their thoughts. Move it with their thoughts? Gotta drink something. <coughs> Karach is not shaped by heat, but by knowing oneself. It is a mirror that reflects the will of the wielder on its surface and in its edge. When one knows themselves, the blade is strong, harder and stronger than steel. When does not know themselves, the blade is as water, formless and weak. What rank does the blade signify? The blade is a symbol carried by a third. A third is one who knows the words of Sentimon. Sertimon. In knowing the words of Sertimon, they know themselves. Sertimon? Sertimon founded our race. He knew the Gisari people before they knew themselves. He defined the people. He gave them one mind. Okay, I had some other questions. Can you tell me about the city? It is known by the name Sigil. Among the people it is known as the city that does not know itself. It does not know itself? What do you mean? The city exists, but it does not know itself. Not knowing itself, it exists. Its existence is flawed. How is it flawed? The city exists in opposition to itself. It has set itself apart from the plains, yet it seeks to be everywhere at once. Its walls are doors, yet it keeps these doors locked. Such an existence tells of a thing that does not know itself. In not knowing itself, it is flawed. This is interesting. Let's tell him a truth. What if the city is not flawed and you just do not know the reason for its contradictions? There is order in everywhere. Perhaps there is an underlying pattern yet that you cannot perceive. To your question a question. What if the city is flawed and you see its contradictions all around you? To your question a question. You claim the city's existence is flawed. You have accepted this rather than explore the possibility that something greater may exist. That suggests you are flawed and that you do not search for knowledge but only for an convenient answer. Ooh, this is heavy stuff. The con falls silent. There is no knowing the answer to the questions we have asked, yet the city exists, that is all. Yet I would maintain that we know ourselves by the questions we asked and the ones we do not. If we cease asking questions and accept only what we can perceive, five other experience points, then we will cease to know ourselves. Dakon's voice has changed slightly, become heavier. Such words have been spoken before. I have heard them and know them. Where have you heard them? The words are mine. Once I knew them and I knew their meaning, I had forgotten them until you spoke. Dakon's gaze travels through you and his blade stops shimmering 
bleeding of all color until it is translucent. There is a moment of silence, then the corn looks up at you. I will travel your path with you. I accept an extra blade would be welcome. Your path is mine. Strangely enough, his voice seems distant, and it echoes as if it was speaking, speaking from across a great distance. Very well, let's go. And we have the corn in our party, which is pretty awesome. If you ask me, the corn is a fighter mage, fighter level three, mage level three. Very strong, quite intelligent, quite wise, pretty dexterous, good constitution, good charisma. He has good stats. <sighs> I'm very glad to have him. My past is not known to you. It is not my will that you should know it. Know that I bear the scars of one who has traveled the plains. Know that I have never rested long in any one place. Know that I bear the weight of, weight of one who has traveled far to be in this place. Know that I am a git... git how do you pronounce that? Gitzerai. I'm a Gitzerai. Know that I am of the people of Tzertimon. It was Tzertimon who knew the Gitzerai before we knew ourselves. He knew what had to be done to free us. From his knowing came action. From his knowing freedom was born. The Gitzerai ceased to be slaves and became people. Know that I follow the unbroken circle of, Cer circle of Certimon. His words are known to me. His heart is known to me. All that remains is that I know myself. And with that we actually have access to magic. What do you have? Submerge the will? Uh, when the will is submerged, your strength is gained. The strength to endure and protect against adversity. With knowing the teachings of the third circle of Certimon comes greater protection against all forms of attack. When cast, the magical orb of protective energy arises and protects the recipient from attacks from all directions. It bestows an AC2 against all attacks at plus one to all saving throws for 12 rounds per level of the caster. We have, ray, we have Rain of Anger. Certimon's teaching allows the channeling of anger into streams of unerring missiles that quickly strike those that oppose you. The spell summons a magical missile that strikes its target unerringly for 3 to 6 points of damage with no saving throw possible. In addition, the caster gains one extra missile level every two levels for a total of five missiles at level nine. Scripture of Steel. One of the earliest teachings of Certimon, this incantation reflects what knowing that flesh yields to steel achieves. What knowing that flesh yields to steel achieves. Uh, bestowing a greater advantage to strike and the strength to resist damage. Scripture of Steel grants a plus one to hit and a plus one to saves to all creatures that are friendly to PC in a 50 fit, foot fit feet radius from the casting point. God damn it! Wilkwa's eyes. Wilkwa's eye is branded upon the one who is foolish enough to cross the caster. Wilkwa's short-sightedness becomes the target's vision and soon the world is muddled and dark. If the targeted creature fails at saving throw at minus one penalty, the creature will be struck with blindness and suffer a minus four penalty to all its attack rolls and a plus four penalty to the target's AC. Okay, so he has two spells. And what do you have here? It's power of one. Uh, this is a second level spell. And from Gith, the warrior queen, came the knowing of oneself. And from the knowing came immense power. This spell increases the target's strength score by a certain number of points, or tenth of points above 18, which will still be qualified by race class restrictions. This spell cannot bestow a strength of 21 or greater. The bonus is as follows. Hmm. 1d8 plus 1 for warrior. Now to Shabby... We still cannot save. This is All right. annoying. Um... <coughs> Well, it's okay. Why can't I save? All right. Feeling better? 
No, I can't save. It's weird. Let's talk to you. What is your will? Dekon turns to you, his eyes like polished coal. His blade mirrors his eyes for a moment as you address him. Then he nods. What is your will? There are things I would know, Dekon. I had some questions about the Giserai. Um, what else? Um, this is nothing new. You seem to place a special emphasis on knowing. Why? All things, but the structure of flesh, their existence is defined by their knowing of themselves. And if a man does not know himself, when a mind does not know itself, it is flawed. When a mind is flawed, a man is flawed. When a man is flawed, that which he touches is flawed. That can pauses. It is said that what a flawed man sees, his hands make broken. Do you know yourself? The con falls silent. His cold black eyes take on the same distance that you noticed when you first met. Let's not... I don't know. Nah, no, let's not push the point. Um... I had some questions about the Giserai language. Can you teach me the ways in which your people speak? Know that the speech of the people has its foundation in history. All things are a story to us, a metaphor is a tool and an inspiration to the strength. Know when we speak of Toruk's table, remember that Toruk was noted for his hospitality and goodwill. When we speak of Selquant's heart, we recall the lecherous and cruel nature of Selquant. I understand. Updated my you. journal. Dekon teaches us some of the common forms of speech. A wise man is said to have wrote the book of Anarchs. While the accused another of treason is to remember Wilquart's eye. It is said of generous people that their cup walls are bare. Common greetings include hail, sword ringer, and Tsekai's kin bow to you. To which one should respond, and the traveler is pleased. Dekon is a skilled teacher. After his instructions, you feel capable of exchanging proper greetings with other Gitsarai. Okay, I had some other questions. <coughs> oh, we can't learn any more about the language right now, apparently. I had some other questions instead. I wanted to ask you about your travels. <coughs> For fuck's sake. What can you tell me about the city of Sigil? Oh, we already had that. Um, you speak as if the city is alive. It may not be aware and know itself in the sense that you or I might know ourselves, but it lives, it grows, changes and touches the minds of all that live within it. Um, yeah, we already had that. Ta-da! Ta-da! Ah! Dakon, how is it I know your words? I spoke the words, but they do not belong to me. Others may know them, for the knowing of it lies within all things. Humans call it wisdom. Very well, there are other things I would know. Do you know a man named Farad? That one is not known to me. I lost a journal. Do you know where it might be? The location of such a thing is not known to me. Um, can I talk to you about your teachings? 
Can you teach me anything of weapon craft, Dakon? Dakon shakes his head. I can redirect one towards the craft of war, but I cannot advance their skill. My weapons are not of steel, but of will and knowing of this self. Very well, if I ever need to resume the fighter profession, I'll ask you. Oh yeah, if you happen to be a mage or a thief, the Khan can turn you into a fighter again. Uh, can you teach me anything in the art? No, that I am not the teacher in this, but I know that I may serve as a guide. I do not know how humans come to be versed in the art, but when you learn the art, return and ask me again. So if someone would turn the nameless one into a mage, Deccan could teach him spells. So, what did our journal get now? Dakon has taught me much of the Giserai language. It seems to be based on metaphors and stories. I don't know all the specifics, but if I ever hear a new term, I can ask Dakon to tell me of its meaning. Um, we probably have another character now. Dakon is a Giserai, one of the tight-lipped people of Limbo. His skin is yellow and lined. He appears to be old, and pain haunts his small black eyes. He carries a blade of strange metal. Oh, let's take a look at that. Darkon's self blade. Two to nine slashing damage plus one to armor class. Tackle plus one. Not bad. Usable only by the con. On the Gitzerai's home plane of Limbo, solid matter is something of a rarity. Limbo itself is a soupy mass of elements, and only through force of will can the Gitzerai shape these elements into stable matter. A substance called Karach is a material that can be shaped with the mind. The Khan's blade is composed of this substance. Though mental discipline alone, through mental discipline alone, the Khan maintains the integrity of the blade. He can shape it slightly depending on his skill, adjusting its length and sharpness of the edge. Presumably, as he gains levels, he may be able to manipulate the blade in new ways. It is not known whether all Gizarai's third carry such weapons. Certainly a weapon that depends on the integrity of the wielder would be entrusted only to those who had learned to discipline themselves. This blade appears to have special religious significance to the corn. The corn has wound a series of parchments around the hilt of the blade. These appear to be mantras dedicated to Tsertimon. What else do we hear? Do we have here the unbroken circle of Tsertimon? Usable only by the Khan. This small round stone is the unbroken circle of Sertimon. The unbroken circle is a third religious text containing teachings of Sertimon, the founder of the Gizarai people. The circle is made of a series of interlocking circles that fold out from one another, depending on which branch the reader wishes to follow in the path of teachings. It is said that some thirds spend years poring over the combinations of the plates, looking for a new significance in the teachings. The Khan seems to use the text as a means of focusing his spellcasting abilities, for he pours over the tablet occasionally, memorizing the words. Let's use it. The small round, the small round stone appears to be a richest text that the Khan carries. It is made up of a series of interlocking circles that fold out of their, fold out from one another. The complexity of the plates and the intricacy. Of their links prove the text was constructed by a master artisan. You can't figure out how to unlock the plates, however. Well, let's leave it alone then. Whispering flask. Ah, plus two to strength. This container holds a peculiar power called whispering modes, loose translation of the gith expression, a form of healing power commonly used by the Gitzerai on the plane of limbo. When the stopper is pulled and the spice touched, on the skin of a wounded person, the spies travel through the injured person's body, generating raw matter to fill up the holes in his physical form, no matter how small or large. In order for the spies to work, the user must concentrate on its healing effects. With the proper discipline, a practiced Giserai can even heal the greatest of wounds. In addition to its creative properties, it is it is also the element in several of their rites of passage. It is believed that the spice also fills the holes in a person's psyche, removing doubts and giving them focus and purpose. Not bad, if you ask me, not bad. He has an armor class of 2. <laughs> the nameless one has an armor class of 10, holy shit. That's why he's getting hit so heavily. And Morty has an armor class of 2. 
Yeah, well, okay. How about we call it a video? We have our third party member now. This is a very good thing. We will save. And continue the next one. So thank you very much for watching and see you soon.